Blender is one of the most interesting 3D packages we have today, and it probably has the largest base of active users as we are seeing more beginner and professional artists choosing to do their work using it. If you haven't noticed yet, Blender is not exactly like the other 3D software in many respects. To make this clear, in this video, we are gonna talk about 8 reasons why Blender is kinda different than the other 3D packages. Number 8. Blender is free. Blender is the only free professional 3D package that can produce high quality results like the other 3D packages that are currently used in the VFX, game development and animation industry. And the truth is that many 3D artists today use it because it is free in the first place then because it is very good. It wasn't long ago when 3D artists looked at Blender and considered it to be a 3D software for hobbyists, but now it seems like the tides are shifting and more and more professionals are beginning to realize how important Blender is, especially those who work for themselves as freelancers or those who make indie video games, for example. What makes Blender more appealing right now is the fact that it has grown so much in the last five years that's why artists are starting to consider it as an option to switch to or at least using it as a secondary weapon of choice to do things that their primary 3D software is not really good at. Blender actually was not completely free because at some point in the past you had to pay a little bit of money to get access to more features and this allowed developers to keep working on it and make it better over time but all that changed as the years went by. Recently, I made a video showing a brief history of Blender. You can check it out later if you want to. Number 7. It can cover the whole pipeline. Many professional 3D packages can do many different things that are needed in the VFX or animation pipelines, but Blender just goes the extra mile because it has pretty much everything needed to do VFX or animation work. Some of the things that Blender can do are rare or non-existent in other 3D packages like concept art, storyboarding, animatics, compositing, and video editing. This is the case because it was developed in the 2000s till this date to be an independent software and that led to integrating more features over time. It even had a game engine but it was removed in Blender 2.8 since people were not using it that much because there are free and powerful game engines such as Unreal and Unity. Even though Blender has all these free nice features, it does not mean that all Blender users are going to rely on them, especially the tools of pre-production and post-production such as concept art, compositing and video editing because many people rely on other tools to prepare for their project or to do the last touches using other tools and other software other than Blender. But it is nice to have these tools in Blender nonetheless. Number 6. It is not a business. Also, one of the important differences between Blender and other 3D software is the fact that Blender is not built around business. That makes money from you because you use their software. Sure, there is a Blender foundation that makes money from selling products around Blender and the development fund, but you don't have to pay a dime because it is a personal choice. On the other hand, all major 3D packages are owned and developed by huge companies such as Autodesk, The Foundry, Maxon, Cinefax, and so on. Autodesk, for example, makes around $200 million a year selling their media and entertainment software such as 3ds Max and Maya. I'm not against making money or doing business, but sometimes those companies don't serve the best interest for their clients. Like when Autodesk switched to software as a service rather than selling permanent licenses, which pissed off a lot of people. And sometimes worse things happen, like when Softimage, one of the major 3D packages, was discontinued by Autodesk in 2015. Number 5. It is open source. Among the major 3D packages, Blender is the only one that is open source. In general, open source refers to any program whose source code is made available for use or modification as users or other developers see fit. The same way Blender was not completely free from the start, it was not open source from the start as well. It actually happened at the lowest point in the history of Blender when Todd Rosendale, the man behind Blender, was going to lose Blender to investors back in the early 2000s, so he had to ask the community to raise 100,000 euros to buy its rights back from the investors, which led it to becoming free and open source from that point onward more and more people around the world are using open source alternatives to their commercial software. 
In the past, it was looked at open source as dangerous and unreliable. Also, in the early days, only the commercial products had nice UIs, better tools, and so on. But open source has adopted that, and we have seen that happening with Blender. Number 4. It is constantly updated. Also, another difference between Blender and other major 3D packages is the way and the pace at which it is updated. If you have been using Blender at least for the last couple of years, you must have noticed that every few weeks or every few months there is kind of a new release that comes with enhanced tools or completely new tools and features. On the other hand, most commercial 3D packages are updated on a yearly basis, which is expected because software development companies have to give artists and studios a good reason to continue buying their software so they show off the result of their development once a year. Also, it is good to keep investors and shareholders happy, especially when it comes to publicly traded companies such as Autodesk. Number 3. It is not industry standard. Even though Blender can be used in industries such as VFX or game development, it is actually not industry standard even though recently we are seeing signs that it is going in that direction. But generally speaking, Blender has a long way to go, not because of the software, but because of other factors that will cause it to take longer. For example, the fact that studio pipelines are tough to change because once they choose a set of 3D software to use and they develop custom tools around them to make their production fluid and faster, it becomes hard to change all of that and create an entirely new pipeline. Especially for major studios, they just want their work to be done in time and in the best possible quality, and the software is not their biggest concern. Also, if we consider the amount of money studios pay to their employees, hardware, taxes, and so on, the cost of software is not really a big portion of their expenses. It is 5 or 10% at most, which makes the whole process of changing software even riskier because it is not going to change a lot in terms of expenses even if the software is free. For Blender specifically, I think the most difficult problem in its way of becoming industry standard is customer support because often artists and studios have urgent questions to some tough problems and usually customer support can give them answers in few hours rather than spending days or weeks trying to solve the problem on their own. Number 2. It has a small size. Another noticeable difference between Blender and the rest of the 3D packages is size. For the time being, most of them are about a few gigabytes, while Blender is under 200 megabytes, which is a very clear difference in size. Open source software in general are very light and portable because there is an interest to make code clean as opposed to commercial software where the focus is on features and user experience, in addition to trying to release on time before the deadline. 3D packages such as 3ds Max or Maya, for example, have accumulated many external code libraries and this eventually added to the size because new features and improvements in these products are usually layered on top of the code application, which is why they keep growing in size and load slowly. It is the fastest way, but not the most efficient, to get stuff out of the door before the deadline. Extra functionality in Blender is normally in the form of uncompiled Python scripts, which are essentially just text files. Open source development is not driven by marketing and strict deadlines, but by the desire to create solid and elegant code that provides a tool to those who use it daily. Number one, it exists because of the people. As we said before, Blender is not part of a business that sells software to its users because it does not rely on software sales to keep its development going. The only reason that Blender exists today and continues to grow at a very rapid rate is the fact that many artists and studios are contributing to its development fund as the primary source of funding. This was the case since it was bought back in the early 2000s and over the years, volunteer coders from the community help to make its tools better so they can work faster and more efficiently, also to let others have a better experience working on their projects. Now it is actually more organized because there are about 20 full-time developers working on Blender to make it better every day at an unprecedented pace. Also, Blender is probably a 3D package with the biggest and fastest growing base of users, especially in the last two years. I hope you found this video useful and informative. 
If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.